Hey kids, how you doing? Mark Miller here and another episode of uh, Code Rush. Fred's with me. Fred, right there. Fred says he's good. Um, let's pick up where we left off yesterday. Uh, got some music going. Roy's going to be here with us next Tuesday. By the way, he was kicking butt. He's in the house. He was... Roy was making some seriously awesome contributions yesterday. Um, I was uh, super impressed with the quality of the suggestions he was making. Uh, Fred says, uh, Fred, how you doing? Fred, what are you doing, man? <laughs> Where are you, buddy? No, you're not over there. you are I can see you. You're like right over there. You're hiding. Get up. Get back up here. All right. Good. You good? Surly wants to know. He's good, Surly. Um, I'm okay. I uh, I uh, spent the last hour trying to uh, uh, undo a, a mistake I made uh, just before I was about to start. I uh, double clicked a uh, uh, double clicked a node in my version control and uh, went backwards and. Uh, had to figure out exactly what happened. I didn't realize the interface was just going to do that without like a confirmation or anything like that. And uh, and then I was uh, working to roll everything forward again. So that's what I did the last hour. So I'm a little bit like uh like that. So um, but we'll see how we uh, we go. Let's see if I can recover from that and get to um, uh, get to uh, getting the. Dungeons and Dragons map editor uh, working. Um, when we last had this thing uh, running, it, we had a bug. Yeah, never get used to me streaming on Fridays. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. So we created a bug. We kind of, the last thing we did, there was a bug here. We were trying to open up a, a file Group save, this one right here. Let's look at it in Notepad. And I just made a change that looked like it was correct, but also looked like it was gonna maybe break something. Uh, and I was kind of in this space here. Here we go. Yeah. There, it looks like my problem is there. I'm in fact not actually sending the children out. It was the change that I made. That's in serialized items. But why is the child there not serializing? That's what I was confused by yesterday. Um, it's a, let's go find serialized item. Yeah, its children are there. It should be totally, uh, it should serialize these, which means maybe the children aren't being added. Hey, Greg's with us. Greg WFS. I always, when I see the WFS, I think it's safe for work in reverse. But that could be just me. How you doing, Greg? Good to have you with us. Welcome. Let's see if I can. So here's the deal. Just so we're clear. I'm like a little bit like this. Ah, <laughs> like that. And what I want to do is I want to get a point of the code is doing what I want it to do. It's making sense. I want to change my, I want to change my standing. This is like watching one of those wrestling events and I'm the losing guy right now. And I want to get back up on there. That's what my goal is. So um, we'll see what we can do. Um, all right. Children. This is not being serialized out. Should be, which means maybe we're not adding it. Let's go look at add child, prepare item for serialization. Should totally get here. Let's see what we can do. Let's uh, do a new uh, group. Let's put it out here. One, two, I'm gonna put two different groups. I'm gonna put a group of stamps and a, a, a group of characters. Okay, so one, two, three, 
group. Whoa, whoa, what happened there in that group? I thought I hit the group button. Let me undo a second. Undo, 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 undo. Jetson! Just gotta, just gotta totally weave through those blades. Jets him in the house. I'm not sure. Do I have a bug in here? I think I do. Didn't feel right to me. What happened? All right, one, two, three. And then group. That just happened again. Okay. So what did it do? It's, it didn't even group them. Also, Okay, let's go find group and track it down. All right, we gotta do this one piece at a time. Uh, group selection is... here. I don't know, let's try this. Start at that point. Um, let's just make sure that when I move these, these all, those move. And if I make changes to these, it does not change the others. Oh, look at that. No, that doesn't look good either. Looks like I got a couple new issues. Oh, look at this one though. Wow. So are we not creating a new when I'm control dragging? Um, lightness, yeah. Okay, looks like when we're control dragging, we're not creating a new GUID, maybe. Um, you know, we're in prepare items for serialization because I deleted it. I'm hitting a five to run. Function lock on? No. Why won't F5 run? That's weird. Okay. Um, all right, let's look at the R. Let's clear this a second. Yeah, F5 is not running. All right, let's do this. Oh yeah, I can't delete that. This is also a symbol of not being able to delete. The wrong one is deleted because the GUIDs are wrong. Okay, so I think we have a good problem. Let's just drop individual items out and group them. And see if that works, then that means we have a good, that's just confirmation that we have a good problem. Happy Friday, Jetson. All right. All right, I'm gonna run it. Oh, this is going to kill me if I don't get F5 working here. What could be possibly interfering with F5? Okay, so now the question is, so the group worked here. Yeah, so it's a, it's a GUID issue. Control drag though, this is where we have the GUID problem. So if I come in and I say, let's change the hue of this. Um, oh, that worked on the control drag. The control drag of a group worked, but is the control drag of a stamp not working? What could possibly be interfering with that? How about a no running sign? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Control drag like that. Now change it. Yeah, that control drag of an individual doesn't work, but apparently control drag of a group does work. Can I delete that? Okay. So let's figure it out. Uh, that's the copy command.
think we're in this space here. No, I didn't want to laugh. I'm not going to admit that. There might have been a something. All right, we need. Uh... All right, let's see what we got here. So it's on a simple one of these drop down in here. So let's take it, drag it up, and now release. F10 is not working. Come on. Function lock is off. F5 is not working. Like what? Like all of these keys are not good? I'm going to start up a new instance of Visual Studio and explore the shortcut key issue. <clears throat> All right, we hit a five. Not now, hit a five. Well, I'm hitting, the, well, hold on, there we go. So, function lock has got to be on, apparently, I guess. Just to make sure, okay. Let's go, let's hit it here, F5. That looks like it's working. Build started. All right, good. What's going on back here with this? F10, not working still. F5, not working. You can see it there. Okay, now run. Okay, come on. Visual Seal, Visual Studio sees this. Uh, I'm inclined. No, I wasn't. No, seriously, no. No, 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 I think in a second, because you came in just at the same time as pudding, I think you need one more, like just a little bit of time to pass and then it can go. Oh no, you came in with your uh, your uh, secret uh, suppress character there. You're good. Um, yeah, I, I don't think the NVIDIA control panel was successfully installed, to be honest. I don't see it down here. Let's look at uh, NVIDIA. Let's see if we can start it up. I hit start, but I don't see it. Okay. Since it worked in the other instance of Visual Studio, but it's not working here. Um, I am actually inclined. I think a restart's going to fix it, but I want to, uh, I want to, just in case... There might be some issue here with Code Rush. I want to uh, report this so the devs can see it. So devs, I am uh, trying to hit the F5 button. Um, if I go into options and I just highlight this and I hit F5, it sees it. Visual Studio sees, I just pressed F5. 
So nothing's taking it, but if I'm here and I'm debugging and I've got the other window, window I was focused on, I hit F5, we do not run. We're still at a pause breakpoint. Yeah, F5, 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 F5. Similarly, I can't hit F10, F10. If I start up a new instance of Visual Studio, it works. It's just not working in this instance of Visual Studio. So I'm hoping that uh, maybe there's some sort of clue here uh, that uh, F5 doesn't work. Put that in there. Hopefully there's some clue in the logs that can give you uh, an indication of what's happening. All right, so let me stop everything. I'm going to close down this instance of Visual Studio. Jeez, I can't even stop. Like, no keys are working. Shift F5 isn't working either. <clears throat> Stopping this instance of Visual Studio. Starting a brand new one. And here's the control panel. I think it's good. I don't think it's hijacking keys. I don't think. Yeah, you might have to wait a little bit longer today. You can use it. You can, can't can you open a VBA in uh, like Visual Studio? Can't you? I've had VS do that to me before. Also lose the ability to just type in the text editor. Uh, I've seen that where like a file will get locked sometimes when you're doing edit and continue. All right, let's see if right now I can press F5. First, I'm just, I'm clicking it. There we go. F5. Now it looks like it's working. Yeah. All right, so we're running. All right, so I want to drag and create a copy of this. So I control the control key while I drag, I let go. And there's something wrong. Our theory is that it's not setting the GUID up correctly is the problem. Here's my clone, which goes in turn and calls a copy. I think we're just going to have to step into it, see what the problem is. Now we're going into clone here. Then we're going into new stamp. Oops, why are we creating a new GUID? We might have done that when I just hit F10. We might have gone into stamp and that might have gone into base stamp. And I think that should have created a new GUID. Is that right? Remembering that correctly? There it is right there. So we should have a GUID and it looks like we do. All right, okay, good. So that's not bad, right Fred? Fred says, good. Um, okay, so now the question is, are we then overriding that later? Transfer properties? Base get properties from. Transfer good is true here. So what do we gotta do? Transfer properties. Who's calling this? only clone so I want to stop this a second and I want to go do the same thing that I'm doing inside of base get properties from in other words this right here I want to put here well to be fair this is only being called from one place clone so I'm gonna say transfer good is false let me do this instead. I thought this would be helpful, but I don't like the, um, I'm just gonna line this temp. Okay. All right, let's run it again. Surely Dev flying around. All right, here we go. 
We're up. Drop it. Uh, let's bring up the saturation. Cool. Let's click and drag. Uh, I think we're going to be good this time. Okay, now let's modify this. Drop the saturation down. Good. Now that one works. And this one works individually. That's all beautiful. Okay. Kind of looks like my shirt a little bit. All right. So let's create a group. Group those together. Let's save them. Call it uh, stamp group test like that. Let's open something else up. Find lot of small. Let's go back up. Open up our stamp group test. Oh, okay. So the groups aren't saving. If we go out and look at this, that's when I think we're going to confirm that the groups are not saving. Wait. What is all this data in here? These are all individual tiles. Oh, the tiles are being saved. I see. Okay. Yeah. Children is null. Children is flat out null. So the items aren't being added to the group, it looks like. Okay. So that... But it's not added when it's serialized because it's certainly added when it's dropped down. group it. And now I want to go to that point where we prepare for serialization. I want to see what's going on there. Here's our event handler right here. Well, if I delete it, we should get here. The group's got children. Serialized stamp. We said we needed to get it from the child stamp, and that brought us right back inside again. Notice we jumped right up to the breakpoint right here. There, this should be no, though, which means we get back. run it. Okay, so there's our serialized stamp. Okay, let's go into there. So children is now being populated in from this. That should, we should get that a second time. There's the second child. So we've got now, wait, why do we only have one child? I don't get that.
It's like we're, it, it doesn't make sense to me that we are in a secondary piece there. And serialized item is now back. Hold on. Is it really children is no? So it's ha the problem happens somewhere in here. Okay, I'm really confused. The problem is definitely here. So now if we undo, it's going to try to deserialize. I don't think it's going to work. It'll bring nothing back. I'm like feeling pretty certain about that. Yeah, there's the null children right there. Okay, so we'll just run it. So you think something's there, but it thinks something is there, but nothing is there. Now this is not good because we've got no children in there, I think. Let's try one more time. Group, delete. Okay, so the stamp that we're, we're coming in here with ends in 63. It's got no children in it at this point in time. I set the stamp equal to this item right here. Serialized item, serialized item. I set the properties equal to the, the piece that we are going to, to prepare it with. Invoke the event. It's a group. Then we're going through the children in the group. There are two of them. Um, at this point, children is null, but after we call that child, it should have one child in it. This part we don't need anymore. Okay, there's our serialized stamp. Item still should have null, and now we call add stamp, add child. I mean, there we do. There we got it. Children's got a count of zero. Children's got a count of one. Sorry, right here. Serialized item is there. Children is one. comes the next one. Children is null. <laughs> this does not make sense to me. Cavity next reference, there, there are no assignments to this other than right here. All right, let's try this. I'm, this should not solve the problem, so I'm not like happy with it. But I want to try it anyway. I want to initialize it so it's always got a list. <clears throat> Start running again. <clears throat> Delete. Mm. 
Item children count as zero. Item children count is equal to one. Still equal to one. Still equal to one. Still equal to one. Still equal to one. And it gets to zero. What's going on in from child stamp? It's modifying the children pop property of e a dot item, resetting it to zero. stamp for serialization. Well, we do come back in. Are we really coming back in? Because if we're coming back in, why wouldn't we hit this breakpoint? That's what's mind blowing to me as we should. If that's really coming back in, why aren't we hitting that breakpoint? All right, let's do it again. Because we're past the point of. Uh... Of it being of any use to us anymore. All right, select both of these group them delete. All right. So we get here to this point and we are now at a child count is equal to one. I'm going to set a breakpoint here. I'm going to set a breakpoint here. Run it. And now we're in the second loop. So stepping over this, are we going to hit any other breakpoints? And actually, just before we do that, yeah, that's the thing. We should have hit this breakpoint, and now we should definitely hit this one if we're going to come back in here all of a sudden. I'm going to hit F10. Okay, now we are up here. Move your drone. Surly dev. I can take care of that. I've got this master dock command. There you go. Uh, okay, so we do bump back in, but why aren't we hitting this? We should get exit here anyway. I don't even get that. Exit, exit, exit. Yeah, I almost feel like this isn't, is this really an error in debugging? This doesn't make sense either. Run, and now I get down to the second one here. Children is zero. Children isn't like some crazy thing like static, is it? No. All right, let's try one more time. I'm going to add some watches up here, see if we get anything different with the watches. Group, delete. All right, here's my watch for this. Do I have a good on this thing? Let's throw the good up here too, so we're looking at that. So run, run, step. Oh, the good just changed. Oh, because we're back in here. We came back in. That's okay. We're good. We're going to get out. I, I want to get rid of this breakpoint and just use this one here. Okay. 
So now we're back to the, I think we're back to the right good. Uh, we're at 8-4-B-2. And now hit F10. Oh. Oh, I think I know what's going on. I know what's going on. Yeah. This, so I can't explain what's going on without first saying the name Dustin Campbell. Dustin Campbell used to work for us. And, uh, and he taught me at one point, hey, if you've got static events like we have here, or I'm sorry, not static events, but if you have events that are called frequently, you can make them run much faster if you have an event args that is, uh, that's, that's alive for the whole time. And all you do is you just reassign the properties on the event args. That works unless you have recursive events coming in, which is exactly what we have. So that's what's happening. We're just assigning, reassigning item here. What we need to do instead is kill the static event args, this, this kind of field variable here, and instead endure, endure the, um, the, the, the penalty of, uh, of uh, that's the fix right there of the performance penalty, which is probably not a big deal. Probably anyway, it won't even be noticeable with what we're doing. So that's what's going on. Sometimes the chat bings on the string, but not sure when or why. So coding gorilla, uh, that is, I'll explain what's going on with that. It bings because it's not you, it's me. I have this app right here and it is looking for important messages in the chat window so I don't lose them. And it will bing me if something passes the heuristics for important, like it's got a lot of words in it, or maybe it uh, uh, it uh, has an exclamation point like this. Did you hear that? So I get this little message, and this is showing up on another monitor, but I get that sound effect, and you get to hear it too, because it's coming through my desktop. So that's what's happening there. All right, let's see what we've got here. We'll see we're in a little bit better shape. Okay, select both, group, delete. All right, so now this should work. EA item count is one, back in again. Count is going to two. That was it. All right, kids. Sorry about that. That was like kind of an elusive problem that uh, hard to find and figure out just because of the event args were global there. That's why that was happening. Okay. So now does that mean we're... I think that means we got a much better chance of my undo working if I hit undo. It looks like it's working. That also may mean that if I save... Stamp group test, and I open it up after I clear it first. Well, I could just do this. Let's just do this. Delete, and then hit open. Stamp group test. There we go. All right, good. Let's scale those down. Let's now go over to characters. Let's see if we can do a character group. Also, lots of words make your heuristics think that the longer the waffle, the more important it is. Well, that falls down when somebody just wants to test that by typing lots of waffle, just like this. Right, go ahead. Get back to tidying. Minimize your browser, browser, mister. Yeah. All right, so two of these. Delete, undo, please work. I want to clear this breakpoint. I just want this to work. Yeah, see, you like that approach I'm taking? Just it's just essentially, you know, one of the uh, one of the uh, seven stages of grief, bargaining. Just like, please work. That's what I'm doing. That's where I'm at today. All right, so we've got this group and we've got this group now. Theoretically, save. Uh, oh, it just overrode the file. Let me do this. I'll do a save as. Uh, call it four stamps. Two wizards. Two wizards. OK, 
Okay, let's open up. Let's open the up Lava Small. Let's open up uh, Four Stamps, Two Wizards. Yes, are they still grouped? Yes. All right, not bad. If I just fixed every problem, have we now finally got to a point where I can group characters together, bring them, let's see what we can do here. Let's open up um, this. I don't think any stamps will come up yet because we changed our whole data format. Yeah, no stamps are on here, but now we should be able to lay something out here. Let's just do a simple test. Um, get a table out here and uh, throw out some chairs. All right. Wait, if your steam wasn't as low? Dude, what genre of music is this? I don't know. Don't ask me questions. I have no idea. Does genre do anything? Does it tell you what it is? It doesn't seem to tell you what it is. I don't know. It's better to just say, what do you want? It'll give you action. All right. So we've got... Our table set up over here. And now I'm going to just select a bunch of these and we're going to group them. Undo, undo. Group, group, group. Sorry, select, select, select. And now group. And now I'm going to hit save like that. I'm going to actually throw a character down here too. Let's put like uh, some of these guys in here, some bad guys. Let's center them and let's space them out evenly. Let's group them as well. So we've got to save it. Let's open up Lava World. Or whatever. Four stamps, two wizards. Let's go back and open it up. Okay, excellent. Now, yeah, next question is, what do I do next? Um, one of the things that I'm playing with is this idea of layers. For example, we come up here in the properties, we've got these right here. Character properties, actually character properties. I might want to play in that space for the character properties. Yeah, let's do that for a second. I want to totally do that. Okay. So, let's do this. That's the only change I want to make. And I just, I don't know if it's going to work yet or not, but <clears throat> I want to see if it does. And if it doesn't, I want to fix it. Okay, drop a character, 
bring up its property editor. Look at that. Uh, hey there. Hit enter. Undo. Redo. Look at that. Let's save it. This is this is the killer test right here. Well, there's maybe actually a couple of them actually. Let's do this. Let's uh, control drag it. Okay, when we dragged it, we did not get it move this this value would not move across. Where's our transfer properties? Clone. Get properties from Base item properties. I think we need this. Almost an override is what I think we need. Here. It's kind of what I'm feeling. Okay, let's delete this. Let's drag it. I don't know. I don't think I can do an override inside of edit and continue. Yeah, no, it doesn't like that. All right, we'll kill it. Okay, and then here we're going to say uh, we're going to grab our name property and grab it from there. Okay. Must be transferred and get properties from. Okay, let's run it. Seems like a good candidate for some reflection. I'm not, I don't think so. I think I'm going to play an interface space on the save and reflection on the uh, deserialize. That's what I think I'm going to do. I don't know. We'll see how it turns out. All <laughs> right. But uh, I'm thinking this is what it looks like. The solution looks like this. And then here, I think it goes like this. If uh, item properties is uh, that, then we're going to say something like this. That's kind of what I'm seeing. That's kind of what I'm feeling in here. Um, because we're doing direct assignments to the property value. Oh, I'm, I'm battling with your suggestion, Coding Gorilla. I'm totally battling with it. Like the advantage to it is that we can add new properties here. We don't have to do anything. 
We just add them and they come across. We can also use reflection on the interface passed in as well. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I kind of get that. I guess I'm worried about, well, if we restricted it to only things with attributes like editable property, then it could work out. All right, let's go your let's go your suggested route. Let's do it. Okay, so this is gone. Uh, now I'm playing with this space. Let's see what you think about this. Now that's the one I'm thinking about right there. So let's see what we get when we go there. All right, so now this is what the code looks like here on the client side. If item properties is a map character, then get properties from, and we're gonna pass in map characters, the class to kind of guide it in terms of what we want it to take. Is this gonna mess with, how bad is this gonna get? All right, well, let's set a break point here. Um, Part of the thing is, is that not all the properties are writable. Not all the properties are, make sense to transfer over. Um, there are a few that were not. Most of them do fall into this category. Um, like for example, I'm thinking, okay, are we gonna just assign a bunch of properties and then reassign them here again? Um, so, you know, and do, am I gonna go up the hierarchy, get all the ref reflected items? Let's see what we can do that's good here. Um, okay. I 
Oh, Jesus. Guess who didn't come in with system.reflection? You're the man, Fred. You're the lizard, Fred. All right. Here we go. Control drag. Release. Clear that breakpoint. Clear that breakpoint. Here's where I want to be. All right. Um, What? Seriously, you're not going to let me know I didn't continue this, are you, Visual Studio? It is not going to like, because I'm, all right, let's just write it here. Use IntelliSense only. So let's at least get some of this filtering here. What's the attribute? Editable property. Where are you, Genesis 7 Get out from behind that planet! Start getting the bad guys before they start destroying the world! I, I love how Genesis 7 always comes in with like one or two words that pretty much totally describe what's happening. Um... All right, so here's this. Uh, if not null, then we can do something here. Let's flatten, whoops. Flatten. Sorry. Flatten conditional, that's what I wanted. Okay, so now at this point, we've got a candidate, and I think the code looks like this. Uh, target, no, sorry, hold on. It is, I think it's property info. Dot set value, there it is right there. Target, and then the value, the, the, the value we want to send is property into dot get value uh, from the source. I think. I think we had problems with set value elsewhere with goods. Didn't we have problems with that? Where were our problems? It was on serialization, I think. It was serialization. It may not have a problem if we're going straight to it from a get value to a set value. I think that's the code. So 
So we're implementing Coding Gorilla's suggestion right here where we're using reflection to grab, uh, to copy the data across on a clone. The advantages that we're hoping for is that we simply just declare a new property and every and it just works in the clone automatically. Uh, whoops, we went to character. Uh, we'll come in here, change the value, like that. Now I'm gonna click and drag it and bring it over here. And let's see what we get. Let's kind of come down to here. All right, so we got something. Property info is name. It's the name property. Sorry, you can see it right there, right there. Okay. Uh, anything else? Another one? Locked. Okay. And anything else? Let's set a breakpoint uh, out here and keep running. Yep, we're out of there. Now what's interesting is get properties from, did anybody transfer the locked up above there? It did get transferred. Locked is in base item properties. So it's gonna be transferred twice, but it's okay, I think. As long as we make it an editable property, it's gonna be transferred. So I'm okay with that. So there, now you can see here, we've got Mark in the new name in both places because we transferred it over. That is good. All right, let's add some more properties. So I'm gonna say a map character, I wanna give them some hit points. So I'm gonna copy that to the clipboard right there. Get rid of that comment because we don't need that anymore. So I'm gonna type in AI to get a, uh, whoops, caps lock kicked in there. Hey folks. Copper Beardy is in the house. How you doing, Copper Beardy? How are the plants doing? Are they growing? All right. Slightly worried about this. Cody Gorilla's suggestion is this will only see the ones here. In this instance, but then now what happens when I do a descendant? I'm gonna have to call this twice, which I'm kind of okay with. It's just like, I'm like, you know, will I do a descendant? Well, probably not. You know, what's worse? Is it worse to do the to do it twice or to restrict me later if I, and give me, you know, create problems later if I ever wanna create a descendant, which I'm probably never gonna do. This architecture is essentially done, I think. So I don't know, I'll keep it here for now. I'm like, I'm, I'm, you know, this is, um, this is one of the challenges with using reflection like this to solve a problem is like, you're like, okay, we're, we, you know, are we, we're, are we concerned about doing the same work twice? Uh, if we are, how are we going to solve that? That sort of thing. So, um, all right, let's get to map character. So I want to add a new, uh, piece here called hit points. I want to get an editable property like that, but I think it's got a, uh, wait, what is it? Display text. And I'm gonna, I wanna call this hit points, or maybe just HP, like that. So there's my display text for hit points. Let's run it and see if now we get an editor for that. If we get undo and redo, and if we get serialization, just by adding the property. That's what we're hoping for. All of that to work, including grouping and ungrouping, all working with that. Okay, so characters, drop it down, bring it up. Okay, we got it, hit point, and it knows it's got a zero right there. Let's set it 22. Um, uh oh. And I can't, what's my T? I have to see it from the call stack. So here's a tip. If you're here in a generic method and you're hovering over the T wanting to know what it is, you can't see it. Oh my God, should this be a code rush feature? It's kind of small. 
But if you go to the call stack, you can see what the T is. It's a double. Yeah, okay. Let me stop it. So what we did to fix this, we made a compromise that said any number was going to be a double, but we were going to limit its decimal places to zero like that. We were going to set it up like that. So everything was going to be a number. It's in the locals window also. I didn't see that. drag like that just run it just run it um, okay that's good so we got the same properties in both like that 22 mark 33 Rory 22 perfect and this is also good for setting things up done in the dungeon for the dungeon master you can just cl click on these items like this in fact, we could even, it's occurring to me, we could even have um, something that allows this to just be displayed like right underneath it, like the name and the hit points right there when it's selected. Uh, okay, let's group them both together. Notice when I group them because the names and the hit points are different, they go blank. Um, if I were to by chance change both hit points to 33, and now shift click both of them. We see hit points is now 33, like that. Now this should be 55 hit points and that's 55 hit points. Let's undo this, 33, undo again, undo again, 22 and 33, select them both, group them. Now this is interesting. When I group them, hit point went to zero. When I ungroup them, is hit point zero? It's not. Where's that coming from? That zero, when I group them, the group must descend from map, um, from map character. It does. Then it's the hit points of the group itself. I see. And since we aren't uh, creating a representation of that property, Wait, wait, wait. What happens if I do this? I think what happens if I do this, if I send this 77, that changes it for the group. And when I ungroup, it does not change it for the individuals. And I think I want it to change for the individuals. So that means I need code similar to what's in stamp group. Let me open up stamp group. If we look at these properties right here, something that looks like this.
I think it looks like that is what it looks like. Um, this has got to be virtual. Uh, suppose name. I don't know. I kind of wanted name to be unique for each one. I didn't really want it to be a allow multi edit. Um, let's try running that as well. I think that's going to fix it. And I think I want to change these right here, the editable properties. I, I want to change the attribute. I don't like the parameters to it. Okay, select both, group them, bring this up, change the hit points to 22. And now, whoops, change them both to zero. What's happening with that? Was I not paying attention? Okay, is the problem here? Has any children? Oh, that's my problem. Okay. There we go, 22, 44. Ungroup, now they're individually set to both 44. Okay, good. Um. All right, it's a little bit of work what I wanted to do, but I didn't like how, I didn't like this right here. Let's look at editable property. I'm coming up with actually a uh, not as yeah I'm just debating making different properties for each of these different things that we're going to do uh, is what I'm playing with but now I'm like as soon as I started looking at it I was like oh maybe not Yeah, I don't know. I guess I'm here. I was just thinking about another attribute that said num decimal places attribute and another one that was display text attribute because I wanted to add more kinds of functionality to it. But then that would mean we'd be decorating all of these properties. It would look something like this. It would be like, um, here, we can change at least this now. It would look like this. Uh, editable property. Ignore this one at the top followed by uh, num decimal places zero, followed by uh, display text. Like this. Looks like I already have a display text attribute. Really?
Ah, I'm using it there. I'm using it for my enums. I could reuse it. The problem is, is that everywhere I've got an editable property attribute check, not here, but in reflection, am I just not getting it? Design patterns likes uh, the separate ones. Yeah, I'm kind of with you. I, I think it looks better here. And I, if we are really clever, we can make it so you don't need to always say editable property. In other words, if you use one of these other two, you're good. It, it presumes it's an editable property. Um, my problem is I'm looking for get attribute. Hold on, maybe my problem is because I've got code that doesn't compile. Is that why I can't find it? I'm looking for... Wait, wait, wait. I think I know why. Uh, Coderish is looking only at constructors because the attribute call is technically constructor. Kids, if you're not uh, following uh, Codebase Alpha, you should do so. Also, Copper Beardy. Give Copper Beardy a follow if you're not following Copper Beardy. Uh, okay, so wait. I'm, so if you do, if you start Tab Linux Reference, if you start it on a constructor, coders will only find constructors for you which these are technically qualifying as constructors. If you start it up on the class name though, then it'll find everything, which means now I should see it. There it is. That's why I didn't see it before. So here's the problem. We're looking for only one attribute to determine if it's, if it is, you know, is an edible property. Uh, I think I want a new function that basically says, uh, if not is uh, editable. And I think I'm gonna consolidate this inside of it as well. Let's try that. So then we can find a number of options on it. Um, actually, wait, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I want to do, so here's where I want to get the other, uh, uh, the other ones. Keep thinking Roy's going to come up with a suggestion. Oh, he's suggesting, you know, he is. I could do it without Rory. You hear me, copper beardy. I could do it without Rory today. I'm going to do it. All right. So if we find editable property, then we're good. Okay, let's keep going. Let's use that uh, display text uh, attribute. No, Rory, no go. Okay, so if display text is uh, not null, then return true, it's, it's editable. And then I wanna do one more, num digits.
Okay. Where's my display text attribute? Down there in the map core. Come on. All right, here's my num digits attribute. All right, let's get back there. All right, so one of the ones we we're worried about was here. Keep going. Create comparison. Yeah, here's part of the problem. We got some uh, w something that used to go in in one attribute is now going in in multiples. Why not make the is editable method a generic general that accepts an attribute and checks if it is implemented? Then have specific pass through calls for each attribute. I can do that. Let me set a marker here. Let's go back to Reflection Helper. I think what you're suggesting is just to get something here that's basically look, has attribute is kind of what we're looking for. In fact, well, I think it looks like this. I think you're basically saying, look, if has attribute, I think you're suggesting this to simplify the code. Whoops, this should be property info. And maybe just with a slight uh, adjustment to it. So this is gonna be return. It's not null. And then you're going to say, put a this right here. So then it's going to look like this. If not, property dot has attribute. Are you suggesting this to clean up the code? If that's what you're suggesting, then I'm all over that. Essentially, yes. Make the method class open for extension, but close for modification. Uh, well... Yeah, I'm not sure that this method is going to qualify there um, because there's at least one more that I need to add to it. Uh, what we could do, though, is we could do this. We could register all of these and put them in a list. We could do automatic registration by having them all descend from a, a certain editable property attribute. Yeah, so I'm kind of playing with that space now. So let's go. Create a design time attribute. It's there. Then we can have all of these things descend from that. Then we can find all the descendants of this when we uh, start up and do the registration ourselves. So then all we need to do is descend from design time attribute and then it will qualify. And then I, we've got the uh, method totally closed for modification. 
and extension is happening just by adding a new class, which I kind of like, especially if I'm going to be adding a lot of classes for this, probably not. I think there's going to be about four and we'll be done, but it's kind of a neat thing to show. So let's go back to reflection helper. Let's go into display attribute. Let's have it descend as well. And I can also put an attribute on the attribute, I suppose. That's the other way I could do it. Instead of using inheritance. I'm going to go with this for now. Okay, so now we've just brought all of those up. Um, and we've set it up so that they can be any one of these can work and qualifies as a design time attribute. So now I'm going to, inside my reflection helper, let's create a static constructor. Uh, in Code Rush, the template is CCS, CC for constructor create and then S for static, like that. So CCS gives me that. Then I can uh, say like what, uh, reflection helper. Type of reflection helper dot assembly dot get types. I don't think you could use uh, an interface. Gist custom attribute won't deal with interfaces. I could use the interface to collect the list of types first and then call get custom attribute with that particular, that piece. Oops, this needs to be a T. That would be really helpful if I did that correctly. Uh-oh. Okay, so I'm gonna say where T is uh, a, a design time attribute. Is that going to give it to me? Everything's going to work now? Sweet. Okay. Curious to see if Git custom attribute will find inherited attributes. I don't, I'm not going to use it in that sense. I'm only going to have to do, I'm going to find in my reflection helper, uh, static constructor, I'm going to get all types that descend from uh, design time attribute. And I forget, is there a way to specify descendants? I don't know that there is. I feel like somebody pointed this out the other day and I've forgotten it. Got it. Thought you were doing something different, Coding Gorilla. No, I think this is, we're, we'll make this work. Uh, for each type and types, then I want to say if type how do I tell if it descends from something? I really want to just type in types descends from. It is assignable to. Gosh, what is it? It's maybe not on type. It's the, there's another type piece here. Hmm. All right, I got to go to uh, Stack Overflow here. From, hold on, is that my key? Is that my key? Uh, is assignable from? Yeah, I thought that's what I was looking like for that, but I found nothing with it from here. So it indicated to me it's not the type I need to deal with; it's something else. So I'm like. I'm not sure what's happening there. Uh, let's see what Stack Overflow shows me. Get all types in assembly that descend from what you got. S. 
X is subclass of. There we go. I like that. Where's Fred? Fred, where are you, buddy? Fred, come on. Get up here. Sit up here. You good? Good, Fred. All right. All right, so this is better. I'll take that. Mm. Um, and how do I convert that? Do I have a two list and can I specify the type? That's what I really want. Can I do that? Mm. Nope, does not look like that's going to work. Okay. Well, I can still work on that. Look at that. I think there's a better way to do that. Okay. So now we've got these. Now what we can do is we can say um, known design time attributes. Let's create that list, static list up here. New list of design time attributes. We're going to say design time attributes dot add of type. There's my of type. Thanks. Yeah, no, I definitely want to learn this. I want to use this practice using this design time attribute. Like that. Now to list. There we go. No. Come on. No, it's not like an of type cast. Why aren't you giving me either one of those? Out, Fred. Shirley's hiding behind Fred. So I'm, I'm not sure why that's, that code's not working. That feels like it's right. Oh, wait. Hold on. Is it right and the problem is just here? I think it's right. It was not bad. Okay, hold on. Then to list. Declare local. There we go. Okay, we were good. No, Coding Gorilla, you were good. The problem was it was assigning, yeah, exactly right. It was assigning to the wrong type right there. So what am I missing here? Why is for each double underline? Oh, here. Okay.
Okay. Now, then here we do this. Can I do that here? What do I do? Get type? Is that going to work? Oh, come on. How do I call? I'm going to have to call this with reflection, I think. Is there another way? Do I maybe not make this with a T? Get custom attribute. No, get custom attribute, the same problem. Yeah, I'm not sure how to do this. The only way I know to do this is through either reflection to call a, a generic method using reflection, which is a little tricky. Um, or oh, man. Yeah, I think I've got a problem in my collection here. Oh. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I saw that, Coding Gorilla. System type, specific type implementation, that's not going to work. I'm, uh, I'm, I also have a problem here with my known design time attributes. They're not, this is like a, an attribute of a list of uh, items there, not a... Um, well, I can solve this with strings. I think there's a more effective, smarter way to solve this. Which is simply a list of system dot type. Are right, you want to try and talk me through this? This should be a list of type right here. These are the types. Hold on. This is wrong. I don't want this here. I don't want to cast it. That's me thinking like instances are, are similar to. Uh, all right. Better. That's good. Now I'm here. Now the question is, can we do this here? Just work, please. Yeah. So to get type on that by chance, that gonna work? No. Yeah, my problem still is I get to this point. So even though I've, we fixed the other issue, the other issue there, um, get rid of the generic and pass the type in as an arg. I can do that. Okay, we're here. I still can't make the call on GIST custom attribute. I think I'm going to have to, um, yeah, I don't know how to turn that type into something that's a generic parameter. Uh, we can try looking that up, but I think the only way to do that is with reflection. Uh, call generic method with type 
And since, I don't know, past the arg is an arg. I think you're suggesting, wait, here? It's only got an, uh, one argument, which is bool inherit. And I don't think you're talking about here because that's not gonna, that shouldn't work. Yeah, it's not working. Yeah, it's use a variable, but use like a type. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I was looking for, design patterns. That's a little bit of a nightmare, I think, at least when I first look at it. Yeah, no, I got that. I think I'm going to have to just go in and, and get, I've got get custom attributes, get all the attributes, go through them and see if the type names match. That is a way of doing that, I think. Like, look at this. Consider this for a second. So if it's null, then we're going to get out of there. Then we're going to go through all the attributes and we're going to check to see... Or we could do maybe dot has, nope. Okay. Yeah, guess kind of some attribute doesn't accept a type. Pretty sure. What? You know what? I heard you saying this. I thought I checked that. You know, my apologies, kids. I don't know why that didn't work. Oh, you think that was it? Okay. Wow, I'm sorry. That was like really, I felt like a lot of this, this going on. But we are now at uh, realizing Coding Gorilla's, uh, I think it was Coding Gorilla's, Original uh, suggestion here. Was that right? Or was it design patterns? Got to scroll back up. Oh, no. It was design pattern suggestions. We have realized that. Um, and uh, so this should now work. Is it editable? That should work. We still need to go find. We need to find um, some of these and modify them. Yeah, I'll take credit. So here we have editable property attribute, and here's where we're kind of doing some other things. Dependent property, we want to create a new attribute here for this too. Dependent property attribute. Design, sorry, it's gonna send from design time attribute. And uh, All right, so we've got this now. We move type to file there. Come back. Now I want to start removing these. I want to just comment these out and comment these out. And let's uh, find the, uh, let's build and let the uh, errors guide us to the changes we need to make. All right, so here we're going to say uh, num digits, I think is what it was, two. And now that we have num digits, we don't need editable property. I could also keep it though. Because it's kind of feeling like maybe I should. This one is going to have a uh, display text. Min strength to move. It's going to have a dependent 
property of movable. And it's going to have a num digits of zero. And then editable property is going to go to there. And my question is, should I remove them since I've added code to make it so any of them are okay? And I think that's the that's okay. What other, what other um, errors do I have? Any other build errors? So we get rid of that. Num digits. Zero. Okay. Let's build again. <clears throat> yeah, we are going to have more errors in the uh, where we build up the. Uh... Okay. Okay, let's uh, fix up this code. Creating a new class calling it property attributes. And uh, we're going to come in here, we're going to say um, display text. Num digits. Dependent property. And then I'm going to say that, and then We're gonna pass it in there for a create comparison. So I think it looks like that.
Okay. So the property value data then gets some of that data that it needs. And now we just have to create a new instance of the, um, wait, what's happening here? What's wrong here? Did I have the wrong piece when I declared this? Why is that return type wrong? Okay, that's better. Back over to Reflection Helper. <clears throat> Let's make this public. Let's make a second one. It's got the generic piece in here. I'm sorry, what is my problem here? Get custom attribute expecting an assembly to come in there. I'm seeing one right here. It's an, oh, is it my own extension method? Hold on. I think I see what the problem is. Now what's my problem? Now I'm not sure what the problem is. Some attribute extensions. That's not mine, right? Yeah, it's not mine. Yeah, that's kind of what happened, just happened. It's what it looks like to me. I'm like, what? I don't have a where T is an attribute. Is that going to be solving this maybe? Oh, I've got a semicolon at the end. There we go. Is that it? I guess that's it. Okay, that was weird. Okay.
Helpful error messages 101. Yeah. Come on. Get an extra attribute in there. Interesting. Okay. And this one is not going to be this. This is going to be our display text. This is coming over here. It's our display text like that. And then we have one more here. We need a mode where I can turn my drone into a flying glasses and false nose with the mustache. Yes. Let's create that. Give me a sec. Like, let's build that now. <laughs> it's like fake nose mustache. That might be it right there. Retro CRD. Guru meditation error. One sec. I'm kind of thinking I wanted them to fly around a little bit, you know, move around in 3D. Some person has got to say, I like the stream, I like the long term non trivial projects that show the design coding project. Well, yeah, thanks to Design Patterns. That's, we are deeply in that. Uh, you definitely are, and you see the impact of it, right? Sometimes changes are non trivial and uh, involve like you're all over the place because. Something that we're trying to do in the moment we weren't thinking about when we were originally laying it down. So you, you run and you see those kinds of problems all the time. All right, I'm not seeing one in 3D, I think, here. Um, I could use the flat one, though. Um, all right, let me just finish up this. I want to get this working, then I'm going to work on the fake nose and glasses. Let me check my time, though. Holy cow. I have... I have got a, an interview today. At what time? 
Looks like it's in about an hour my time. I'm going to say it's an hour of my time. Yeah, another podcast interview is today. Um, okay. Let's get uh, back to the cold. How'd that feel, kids? Was that too loud? That back to the code? All right, I want to make this smaller. The cool thing is, this is 100% right now. Hold on a sec. We're going to get this thing sized right here. Yeah, Surly Dev. Uh, Talking about my uh, last podcast interview. All right. Now let's size this to 1920 or 1080. Close enough. Now. That's how big I am. My glasses need to be about that far apart right there, which is about 115 pixels. So that means we need to resize this to about 115 pixels. Let's make it 120 like that. Cool. Um, put that disguise on Fred when your D&D party goes into town. Yeah, who knows what we're going to do with this. All right, hold on a second. Let's uh, drop it down. Yeah, I'll put it there. All right, so Twitch assets. Let's put it there for now. Getting low on, on uh, hard disk space. I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that. <clears throat> I have a ridiculous amount. And because of all the asset creation, I've got a bunch of files, you know, giant files out there sucking up space. Um, here we go. Yeah, your coins are taking my hard disk space. Looks like OBS is frozen. I'm not sure if, uh, if I'm sending out or not. <clears throat> it's, sometimes OBS gets non-responsive as I'm... Uh, oh, there we go. What do we think about that? Yeah, I think that's about right. The size looks good. Oh, yeah. I don't think it's going to work too well on Fred, though. At, not at this size, at least. All right, so I'm gonna, uh, we'll turn that off for now, the fake nose. And uh, let's go back, finish up the code we're writing. It's gonna be dependent property attribute right here. You need to be the drone skin. Yeah, I know what you want asking for. I'm just give me, let me finish one thing. Oh my gosh, come on, man. 
All right. Um, no. Bonus coins if you line it up with his face. Yeah, maybe. We should work on that. Uh, okay, so dependent property attribute. And this is going to be the dependent property. So this is kind of interesting, right? We just basically spent 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes maybe, getting nowhere in terms of, of, uh, of functionality. Uh, but making it so the code is easier to read. Here, arguably, the code is harder to read, but this is code that's unlikely to change, and and the real value is in um, is out over in. Uh, let's go look at like uh, I don't know, map character. But look at that. It's in this kind of thing here. So now we have multiple attributes that determine the behavior of. Um, of the properties and what they, how they are at design time. I think I almost want to rename editable property, just editable. That's what I think I want to do. Uh, yeah. All right. Can we run now? Let's see what our, what our build status is like. We're going to need to test all of the design time attributes uh, in the design time editors to make sure no changes have occurred. Here we go. All right. So let's drop this down. Let's bring up the property editor for it. Actually, let's do this. I want to rotate it a little bit here. What? That looks like the property editor failed. I bet that's because we've got a reference to get editable attribute out there that is... Uh... Yeah, I think I know what this problem is. Basically, we're finding nothing. Wait, did we do full circle? Hold on. That's a full circle. That doesn't make sense to me. Let's bring up shift up 12. Find all references. All right, let's go find the code where we build it. It's out in main window.
Uh, let's set a breakpoint here. See how this works. Okay, run. Not editable. Let's go back up. Okay, can't write that property, okay. Whoa, known design time attributes. Okay, I, here's the problem. We're in the wrong namespace. Reflection helper needs to go down in the in below. Okay, hold on. Let's move it. Into map core. Change the namespace. Let's run it. Bug on the static constructor to make sure. Sorry, I was playing with the uh, the nose and glasses. Um, OBS locks up on me. OBS locks up on me. I'm not sure what's happening on the stream side, but when I like drag the uh, image across in OBS, it's totally non-responsive. So I have no idea what you're doing on my stream right now, certainly, Dev. <laughs> it's there we go. Oh, that's what you were doing. Did, did no so no lockups for you. You were able to see all of that animation. That's crazy. All right, I'm gonna turn off my fake news, dude. It's getting to be too many, too much. It's getting a little out of hand, don't you think, certainly, Dev? Um. All right, where was I? Does anybody remember? In the middle of that. Uh, I think I'm in the process of bringing up a... Oh, we wanted to see why in our reflection helper, nothing was coming through. Well, actually we might be now. All right, so let's uh, step through. Checking the known design lists and making sure editable is working, if I recall correctly, yeah. So now, we should be in better shape. So run till we get to this breakpoint. F11 inside. Okay, what is the property info that we just, because we got nothing on it. 
It's the name property. Okay, so it just doesn't have any of those attributes. But we did get past the is editable, so it is editable. So that's great. That means we are actually getting, for this to return true, we have to have some sort of known design time attribute in there. So um, can we see that? Looks like we can't from here. Now we're going in the first time. Should we just run it? Let's run it. Ah, there we go. Okay, cool. All right. So now we need to test it. Uh, when I so this is already good. Min strength to move is disabled because it's dependent on movable. So if we look out here, we go find. Uh, let's go find our dependent um, property attribute. Dependent property attribute here. So if we tap the next reference on that, there, that's what I'm talking about. So min strength to move is can only, because it's a dependent property, it depends on movable being true. Okay, right now, now this is actually cool about what we've done. Before I had one attribute that was just editable and editable, and it took three parameters up to three. And so I set this simple kind of um, dependent property uh, relationship up so that if the property was checked, then you could edit this property here. But what if we wanted to make it so that it was the opposite of that, right? So we could, ha we could pass in a second parameter here that was like an enum telling you what it was going to be like. Surly Dev, you are out of control, Surly Dev. Yeah, we see you. Uh, so yeah, so now what's cool about this is I can now add a parameter here and it's much more readable than having a whole bunch of parameters that don't really make sense, right? You have to kind of drill into the constructor to see what they are like, uh, to see what they, they do. Uh, so that part is good. So movable seems to work. If I check this, that's working now. So I can now specify this or not and it becomes disabled. Cover, this is the display text property right here and here. It's getting the uh, three quarters and one quarter. Uh, and so is this. This is also the display text attribute. They're both being used uh, to get that. Um, and then also weight I th and value. Value has got, uh, uh, if I say 2.34567 and I click away, it should truncate it to just two digits. There you go, right there. And weight, I think, is eight digits or something like that. 1.23567890. And move away. Oh, wait, is only zero digits? Well, that's what we've got here. I don't think that should be zero. I'll make it at least three or four, but we have to stop it to get that to work. So come in here, say num digits make it four. Does that make sense? I don't know, one? Oh, oh wait, I know what it, I know what it is. It's a default. It's a default, hold on. It's a different problem. Let me close it and kill it. I had a default value set up, I think, in my attribute. Why is that funny to you, design pattern? Um, in my editable property attribute, num decimal places had a default value of eight. I'm going to. change that because you've done it before. Yeah, I know that. I know that feeling. Uh, we want to change, go find our num digits. Uh, 
attribute and we want to default its value to 8 as well. And maybe change this to num decimal places. Should I? Because digits is different than decimal places. And then let's change num digits to the decimal places attribute. So now the attribute will just be, say, decimal places on it. All right. Got to annotate something for two hours debugging and only find out, oh yeah, it didn't make the code change. Yeah, precision. All right. Digit precision. All right, I'm gonna do that. Uh, we're going to do that right there. What are you giving us out there? What's your Instagram link, uh, Surly Dab? What the heck? Look at that. He exists. He's not just an artificially intelligent <laughs> creature in the virtual world. Developer, developer, developer. Should I, should I go speak at this event? Should I, uh, that's kind of weird. All right. What's my time? I have about, how much time do I have? Upcoming meeting is coming up. Yep, I got an hour. Well, a little less than an hour right now until my meeting. Um, wait, that URL, it really is a cat. So what's your real name? So what's your real name? I'll let you know when they put out the call for speakers. The main one is at MS uh, HQ and reading. All right. Yeah, I used to speak in um, the UK a lot and I actually enjoyed it. I love the audiences out there. Um, so, and I haven't done it in a while, so, but I'm thinking, oh, you know what, it'd be fun to go back. I keep thinking about it, but I never get around to, to finding the call for vapors at the right time. Um, yeah, like the railroad, reading railroad from Monopoly. Yes, uh, okay, so we are in what appears to be good to better shape. Um, with the app right now. I think that we're ready to start something new in this. Uh, I feel like we, it's super easy to add new properties. Um, to our characters and then have them saved and stored. We haven't, have we tested that? Let's make sure we have, uh, I think we have. But if I come in here and I say this, this is uh, Mark and uh, let's maybe delete this one and let's make this uh, Rory, no offense. There's Rory. So I've got both of those. There's Mark, there's Rory. Let's give Rory uh, 22 hit points. And let's give uh, Mark uh, 11. And then uh, let's save the file. Now, actually, even better than that, let's select both. Let's group them. Why do we have 11 hit points in the group? It's because the group returns the first. The consistent values are not. We need to check that, I think. Consistent values is checked here, but when we group, the, the map character group, gets the first child. And it doesn't, there's nothing to say if they're consistent or not. Like I might convert this into a nullable and return null if they're inconsistent. I'm not sure. Uh, 
All right, anyway, I want to group these though, and I want to save them. And then I want to load it and ungroup is what I want to do. So we're going to call this uh, care prop test like that. And uh, we'll go ahead and delete these both. Then we're going to hit control O to open it up. Care prop test should be a group, should be able to ungroup it. And there's Mark with 11, there's Roy with 22. So good, that's all good. And that's all coming from just coming over here into map character and adding a new property called hit points, specifying these pieces here and everything comes into play. Undo, redo, grouping, uh, saving, loading, everything all coming in immediately from there. So the architecture is good. Um, it's really saying if you came over to speak at that event, which would be Saturday, I bet I could get you some UK user groups to speak at during the week, either before or after. Sure, of course. Happy to. Happy to hang out. That would be awesome. All right. I'm going to take a break because I got to get some food, I think, probably before my, uh, my upcoming interview. And... Uh, and that's it. I think we did a good job here. Certainly we'll work on the uh, the floating mask skin next Tuesday. We'll get that thing going so you can uh, you can maybe should we you do it? make it so you have to buy it with your coins or something? Is there a financial exchange here? Cost you maybe a coin. Uh, I would bring my toy helicopter and hover it in front of you as you speak. Wait, would it be real or virtual? Awesome. So, uh, yeah, we'll work on that. We'll figure that out. Um, maybe it'll cost you a coin, something like that, something ridiculously cheap. Um, or maybe not. Maybe it'll cost more and you'll be the only one who can do it because you're the guy who's got all the money. Um, anyway, that's it. Let's figure out who is out there streaming right now live. Uh, we'll uh, send you on to uh, another uh, Lucky developer to get all you amazing helpers. Thanks so much, folks. Coding Gorilla, Design Patterns, Pudding, Surly, Codebase Alpha, helping us make the code better here, helping us get through it. I feel like today I was a little bit like, you know, kind of had to push me through the mud a little bit to get here. Um, but quality code is good. I think end result is awesome and so happy about that. All right, we're gonna send you over to Brian. Brian Clark, rating in about eight seconds. Tell Brian I said hi. And we will see you kids on Tuesday.